We are still in Gorham, New Hampshire, and we are going to do another Fall Colors road trip. This time, we're going south, and our first stop will be Arthur's Bluff. Our goal for today was to drive a scenic loop from Gorham, New Hampshire to Franconia, Lincoln, the Kankamagas Highway, Conway, and back to Gorham. Artist's Bluff is a viewpoint near Franconia that you can get to via a short hike. After that, things didn't go as planned. Um, oh, I... No. Sure, your watch has a map, no? Uh, probably. So we are at the Artist's Bluff loop hike, and it is very busy here. So we decided to wear masks during our hike. And it's busy because it's a Saturday. So normally we would not want to be out kind of sightseeing on Saturday, but it was raining last couple days and uh, the rain takes the leaves out of the trees and we don't want to miss the fall colors. So that's where we're going on a Saturday. Does this remind you of England? Uh, yeah, in a lot of ways. The mud, mainly. <laughs> We hiked the Artist Bluff Loop Trail counterclockwise and took a spur to go to the top of Bald Mountain. The trail got steeper, but it was still doable. the Artist Bluff uh, Loop Trail and uh, the trail itself was okay until the very end when we got to Artist Bluff and were coming down it got super super busy and we actually didn't go exactly to the Artist Bluff point instead we got on a different rock next to it where it was just two of us uh, we're very thankful that two other hikers told us about it I guess they're locals they know this area but yeah otherwise it's uh, a lot of people here I guess that's what you get on a Saturday uh, during the fall colors. Now it's one o'clock and now we're going to find some lunch because we did not prepare our lunch ahead of this time. of traffic and we saw a police officer earlier uh, on the middle of the road single lining to both traffic lanes so that only one traffic lane goes through it's been like this for what a couple miles this back off of cars at least over a mile yeah 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 so we should check how the traffic looks like on the Kankamangas highway because if it's like this we don't want to go Okay, so change of plans. We're definitely not interested in sitting that uh, traffic on the Kankamangas Highway. So instead, we're gonna go exactly opposite way. <laughs> uh, so we'll go 112 west to 116 to kind of make a loop around um, where the, all the traffic was on the highway. And hopefully we'll figure out how to get uh, back home. And I'm sure it'll still be beautiful. Yeah, um, we're just taking a scenic detour. We've just been sitting here over lunch and it's just solid traffic. I mean, people here, if they're heading out hiking at some of the places we've driven past, 
yeah. they won't make it there before dark. Yeah. So the parking lots were all full and cars parked on the highway to get to yeah. the parking lot. So it's we're uh, gonna head the other way. Yeah. We had lunch at a food truck. So now let's enjoy the scenery. At Lincoln, instead of going east onto the Kankamagas Highway, we went west on 112, then north on 116, through back roads around Franconia to Littleton. From Littleton, we drove back east to Gorham. We have arrived back at the campground. Even though we didn't get to go on the Kankamagas Highway as planned, uh, it is mentioned everywhere as the place to go to see the fall colors, but the traffic was just too much and luckily we were able to avoid it and not get uh, stuck into it. Even without that, we still managed to have a great time and we still saw beautiful vistas and mountains and colors. So yeah, it was a great time. Our stay at the Timberland Campground in Gorham, New Hampshire has come to an end and it was a really good stay. In fact, this has been the longest stay in a single RV park that we've ever had since we first hit the road and we stayed for three weeks, I think it was, at Rainbow's End in Livingston. We've been here just over two weeks, but for the next spot, we're gonna be there even longer. We're gonna be staying a month at the next RV park. So I guess this is something we need to get used to. So this RV park has all sorts of sites from tent sites to RV sites. We actually stayed at water and electric site uh, and a 20 amp electric site at that uh, because we could do it and it was cheaper. Yeah, they normally only use these spots for pop-up trailers and things, uh, but we said, hey, if we can fit, it works for us. And it's actually been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we were originally planning to stay here just one week and we extended by a bit more to, uh, to stay longer. The campground itself is really nice. We're nestled in among the trees. Very specifically, <laughs> we're apparently under a large oak tree, uh, as we've realized the past few days, as acorns have been dropping on our roof. And when you live inside a, a vehicle with a roof made out of taut rubber and plywood, it sounds like you're inside a drum. It's yes. super loud. Yes. Made us jump every time. Another nice feature that this campground has, it has a kind of walk around the river, like a loop. It's I think maybe a half a mile loop. And uh, we've been taking some walks uh, in the evenings. So that's been really nice. But for now, it's super windy and it's quite cold. So we need to get hooked up, dump, and then head on and hit the road. Okay, the hitch receiver pin is through and locked. The couple of latches down, the pin is through and locked. Both safety chains are on, the emergency brake cable is on, the electric cables are attached. The tongue jack is up, the propane is off, the equalizer bar is on, the L bracket is in place and the cover's on. Stabilizer is up, door's locked, window is closed, slide is in, nothing under the wheels here. All the valves are on here, the stabilizer is up. We have bikes, we have a camera. Stabilizer is up, the door is closed, handles are crossed, so it's locked, steps are up, nothing under the wheels here, fresh tap cover is on, vent is closed, window is closed, awning is in, window is closed, stabilizer is up, the door is locked and closed, equalizer bar is on and the L bracket is on, and there is nothing left around our campground. We have some trash to take on the way out. We are good to roll. <laughs> sure.
We have arrived at our next destination. And actually one thing I wanted to mention is that it is Columbus Day weekend coming up and we booked this site only a couple of days ago and uh, we got, I don't know, lucky or yeah. not lucky, but it was definitely in our advantage that our trailer was under 25 feet. Um, as I was booking over on the phone, I think the, the person misheard us the first time and uh, they thought it's 32 feet long trailer and there was no spots left for the Columbus Day Weekend 4 32 foot trailer. But then when he realized there is 20, uh, we, our trailer is 25 foot, we found a spot. Now it's not full uh, water electric sewer, it is water and electric, but that's another thing that our trailer allows us to do because we have fairly large uh, tanks. We can last a weekend or even, I mean, longer. Yeah, and just for context, in case you don't know, Columbus Weekend is a huge deal around here for camping and RVing. Uh, I think it's kind of like, the last chance to get out this year before yeah. winter in in the uh, in the RVs and things, so uh, we should have booked something ages ago. Yes, we're just not used to booking places, honestly. Yes. <laughs> um, we're just used to like rolling into the, some public lands and it being fine. So we only booked this what a few days ago. Yeah, last week was it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you say, we we got maybe a little bit lucky on finding the spot. We spoke to them when we checked in today, and every single RV spot they have has gone this weekend. Yeah. After that, places closed. Like the campground that we yes. were at. Uh, that we left this morning, they actually close for the season on Monday. So yeah. at the end of this weekend, that's it, they're done. Um, so... <laughs> we have some dogs, neighbors here. We have na we're have we not used to neighbors in an RV park either. It uh, takes some getting used to. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, as you were saying, like the fact that we are flexible, we're smaller, we can dry camp for a few days or, or partial hookups for a few days like here. Yeah. It just gives us that much more flexibility to not worry about it too much. And actually, we're going to change site twice while we're here, aren't we? Yes. We've got, um, we, we wanted full hookups all the way through. Now the weather's starting to get colder and we just kind of wanted that for simplicity. Also because we will be here for a whole month. Yeah, which we've never done before. We've never done a month in one spot. One RV um, park. We've one stayed at yes. friends' places during the summer. That was longer. But, uh, but yeah, so we, we couldn't do a month in one site here but we've got a month kind of split between three different spots. Yeah. Um, the middle one is for, what, almost three weeks? Yeah. And uh, that is full hookups, yeah. but we're like, we don't really mind moving site. It only takes an hour or so for us to move. So, um... Do you want to talk about a little bit how, why we were able to um, use the 20 amp hookup site at the previous place? Yeah, so our rig is a 30 amp RV. Uh, so what this means is that the main breaker inside can pull up to 30 amps before it breaks, uh, before it trips. 30 amps is, is a fair amount of power. Uh, two big appliances and then a little bit maybe a fridge or something is kind of 30 amps so like yeah. an electric space heater in a microwave or uh, an electric kettle and the ac or something yeah. two of those plus the fridge is about 30 amps so if we ran two big things which honestly we do quite a lot uh we often run the kettle or the microwave or the space heater or the Hot electric water, water heat heater yeah. we um will easily hit that 30 amps if we did that normally on a 20 amp site we would pop the 20 amp breaker. And actually at the last place, I don't even know where the breaker was. <laughs> there was just a 20 oh, sure, amp outlet yes, out yes. the site. So if we had popped that breaker, I don't know, we'd have had to go and be apologetic up at the yes. office and ask them to, yes. to trip it for because us. Because it was almost like a tent camping site. It was, it was, yeah. it was a tent site, maybe a small pop-up trailer. Yeah. So how are we able to do that in a 30 amp rig? Well, I mean, obviously one way is just not use big appliances. Um, yeah. So that's, that's always the easiest option. The way we do it is we have what's called a hybrid inverter. And one of the modes this has, this is our Victron MultiPlus. One of the modes this has is that we can limit the inbound shore current that comes in. So we were able to say, don't pull more than, we actually set it to 15 amps just to make sure we didn't trip the breaker. We said, don't pull more than 15 amps from the shore power. And if you need more power than that, yep. so if we draw more than 15 amps and we need to supplement that, pull it from the batteries. And that works really well because we're not often running like more than 15 amps for prolonged periods. Yes. It's usually maybe for 20 minutes, half an hour, while a couple of things are on at the same time. So uh, that worked really well for us. And I don't think our, our batteries ever got down below 75, 80% at the lowest. Yeah. And uh, it was just enough to, to keep us real comfortable there. Yeah, so it uses the battery for a little bit, but then as you stop the loads, then the batteries recharge. Yes, yeah, so if you looked at the profile normally of the electricity, you'd find it would be quite spiky as you turn things on and off. Ours tends to be more like a flat line at about 15 amps, and it'll just use more or less from the batteries as needed. 
and eventually that 15 amps will stop again. So yeah, that was our experience of uh, the RV parks on uh, in New England, and uh, we're looking for looking forward to more travels in New England. Good news though, so far, no more low bridges. That's true, um, no more No roads. more bridges with weight limits. That's yep. another one we're looking out for. So thanks for watching. We really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And also hit that notification bell so that you get notified when new videos of our adventures come out. See you next time. These people have no idea what they're in for. Even though we didn't get to go on the Kankanangas, I can never say this right. Oh, it's me. Hi.